Hello everyone, this is Mr. Reese, and this video is going to focus on ideas that we've covered on functions, among other things. What you're looking at here are a few formulas that you'll need to know for your upcoming quiz. And this does not cover everything, but uh, these are some of the bigger ideas that you will see, and hopefully you will commit these to memory. Your quiz is not open notes, so please have these in your head uh, by the time we quiz. What I'm going to do here is go through various examples that uh, cover some of the types of questions that you can expect to see. Uh, here's one particular one here. You have a line passing through two points. Determine the equation of this line in point slope and slope intercept forms. Now, this is not a new idea. You have seen this before. And first thing you'll want to do is, since you will notice point slope and slope intercept, we need the slope. Determine the slope first by using your ordinary slope formula, so there it is. Put your y values on top, x values on the bottom, subtract, reduce, and you get negative 4 thirds. After that, switch to the point slope formula, and this here is your point slope formula right here. Now, of course, I got some blanks, and the reason for the blanks is because we need to fill in that information. We need to fill in, of course, the point and the slope. The point that I'm going to choose here is negative 3, 6, and the reason why I'm choosing that only is because it's first. There's no real reason beyond that. If you prefer to choose a second point, it really does not change the problem. So with point slope, plugging in your point, the y value gets coupled with y, and the x value gets coupled with x. So since the x value is negative 3, I'll put negative 3 here. And since the y value is 6, I'll put 6 here. The slope goes outside here, since our slope was negative 4 thirds. There we are. And by the way, don't get too caught up with the negative. Uh, sometimes that can be a bit of uh, confusion for some. The negative is down here, now it's in the middle, now it's up. It's all the same thing, so no need to uh, fret over that. Okay, that's your point-slope formula. From here you can convert to slope-intercept formula pretty easy. Just simply take this part here and distribute to both terms on the inside. So times your x and times your what ultimately becomes a positive 3. And what that will yield is y minus 6 is equal to negative 4 thirds x. And then since the 3 is ultimately eliminate minus 4. Now since slope intercept means that we have the slope and the intercept represented and essentially you're just solving for y all you're going to do is take this 6 and then add it to both sides so adding it to both sides leaves our slope the same as well it should be and then adding 6 to this gives us 2 and that is really it distance formula this is very straightforward and uh, you can see here that um, well, there's your formula there. This is kind of like slope in a sense that you will group together your x values, you will group together your y values. So um, if you're given a problem such as this here, determine the distance between these two points, just simply plug them in. So negative 6 and negative 1 are your x values, and is the order important? No, it is not important, because ultimately you will square them anyway, and... The only thing that switching them around does is it changes the sign. So instead of getting a positive answer, you'd get a negative answer, and vice versa. The y values are 16 and 4, so subtract those as well. And then from here, it's just arithmetic, so uh, do your math. This gives you negative 5 quantity, well, negative 5 squared, uh, plus 12 squared. Now, a word of caution. A lot of times people will just simply square root these individual values and then add them together in the end. Instead, you must square these first, then add, then square root. So you will have the square root of 25, and squaring any negative value is positive, unless you're dealing with imaginary values, plus 144, which gives you the square root of 169, which ultimately yields 13. Midpoint, another formula you'll need to know is actually very simple. Think about it. It is the middle, and if you want to find the middle, let's say of two scores, you would add them up and then divide by two. 
Midpoint really is just simply an average and because of that its formula is based on averages in which you will take the two x values and add them up, divide by two, then the y values add them up, divide by two as well. The only thing I want to caution about this is that typically midpoint formula is presented together with distance formula and with distance formula you are subtracting x values and y values. So because of that a lot of times people will reflexively subtract these two here. So keep in mind it's an average, add them up, divide by two. So our x values are negative four and two here, the y values are seven and negative three. And then from here just simply follow suit, do your arithmetic and uh, that would yield an answer. So negative four plus two over two ends up being negative one. This ends up giving us two and you should have two coordinates, an x and a y to finish off. This one is a bit more cumbersome for people, uh, determining the center and radius of circles. This, by the way, is a circle. We know this because of the fact that the x and y values here are both squared. Since both of them are squared, we know immediately it's a circle. And because of the fact that both of these are positive, both of these have the same values, it's a dead giveaway. Now, if we want to write this in standard form, this means essentially that. So kind of like the distance formula in a sense, except there are no radicals. Typically formulas uh, that are graphed do not include radicals. So that's why you're seeing this without the square root. Okay, so what do we do? Well, the first thing you want to do is kind of regroup things together. And, uh, oh, I have a mistake here. I had prepared for a different problem. So my, uh, my mistake on that. So how about we start over? Hmm? Okay, better. So let's say this is our problem here. We want that form. So what we're going to do first here is we're going to try and regroup things so that um, our constants moved over here to the other side and we minus both sides. We don't just say, hey, positive 26. I'm moving positive 26 over here and make, keeping it as positive 26. No, you minus from both sides. We rearrange these values so that our x terms are grouped together, our y terms grouped together, and yes, there's a space here and that's because we're not done yet. We're going to use complete the square here to help fill in these spaces. Now, in completing the square, that means taking our b terms for each of them, and since we have two variables, we're going to do this twice. Take our b terms here, in this case 14 and negative 22, divide them in half, so 14 over 2 is 7, and then square it. And that value gets added to both sides. So add 7 squared, or 49, to this group and also to the right-hand side. Do the same thing for this term here, divide it in half, which is 11, and then squared. So you'll add that value to both sides. Now what this does is this allows us here to factor each group nice and perfectly. In fact, we'll get two uh, groups that are identical. So much so, in fact, that uh, we can attach a simple formula to it. The formula really is this. It's going to be x instead of x squared, and then half of this. In other words, what you had before you squared it. So that would give us simply x plus 7 and then quantity squared. Using the same logic here, half of 22 is 11, so y minus 11, don't forget the negative and the negative right here is positive and positive. Add these guys together and you get 144 and guess what? You're done because again that's what we wanted, right? That's what we wanted, so we're good there. What we gotta do now is if, and this is if you're instructed to do so, determine the center and the radius. So there you are. The center, by the way, you'll notice are basically the opposite signs because remember what we want is minus and minus. So opposite signs here is what we're looking for. Instead of plus 7, it's minus 7. Instead of minus 11, it's plus 11. The radius essentially is the square root of 144.